Today I'm working with a barber from California who wants to take some of his money and put it into real estate. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Nails show. This is Holton Wise TV. I'm James Wise. I help everyday people like you start, build, or grow your real estate portfolios. My man, I'm working with today, a guy by the name of Elot. Elot, you are a barber from California, bro. You came to me because you want to invest some of your money uh, into the real estate market, but you can't do it in California, right? The pricing is just too crazy out there, not to mention the policies are uh, too fucking batshit crazy too, but I guess that's a topic for another video. The moral of the story is you want to put your money in the Cleveland market because the price-to-rent ratios are much better, right? And uh, you're hoping to, to find duplexes in the $75,000 range and single-family homes in the $35,000 range. Good news, bad news, bro. Uh, good news. You are correct. You came to the right place. Cleveland, much cheaper than California, Cash flowing rental properties around that price point, very doable. Bad news, those exact price points, not doable, not in 2021. Uh, was there a period of time uh, years ago where you could probably get those prices in Cleveland? Yes, but unfortunately, uh, with the way pricing is in 2021 and the way the market has been going over the last couple of years, those metrics uh, can't be hit anymore. You're going to have to spend a little bit more money but not enough to where it's going to blow your budget or it's going to be like totally out of the realm, brother. So as this is the first video I've done for you, uh, what I've done is I want you to take a look at this property, which is going to be, uh, in my opinion, one of the highest cash flow producing properties you can get. It's actually going to be a duplex with a single uh, with it because, again, no, no, no 75K duplexes that I'm aware of uh, are popping up on the market right now. Typically, we're paying... 85 to 100k for duplexes this one though uh is a duplex with a house so uh, it's a little bit higher but i believe uh that in the grand scheme of things it's probably still going to be better than what you're anticipating so why don't you grab yourself some holton wise swag and then take a look <laughs> Forty-two eleven Store Ave, Cleveland, four four one zero nine. Been on the market four days. And we need to move. We need to move quick, right? The Cleveland market, yeah, as, as you're probably aware, it's insane, dude. There's just so many people uh, bidding on these properties because the price to rent ratios are nuts, right? The price to rent ratios in Cleveland are so much more attractive than the majority of the country. This particular property, in my opinion. Uh, listed at a price point that's going to uh, begat a major bidding war, okay? $99,000. Now, we only have two photos because it's fully occupied, all right? That's okay, though, right? We got the front house here, right? We have a front house and we have a back house, okay? Between these two homes, right, we have three total units right and the market rent for each of these units is going to be 750 750 and 900 right uh the two 750 dollar ones those are duplex units two ones and then we have a separate two family house right so 900 right so it's even uh more attractive than a traditional triplex right because one is a full freaking house okay so you're looking at a market rent every month of 2400 or 28800 now as far as the price goes they've listed at 99000 which just based upon that rent roll would seem super low the reason they're pricing it that low is they do not have the rents up to market, right? So you're going to slowly need to increase those. Currently, they got people in there at 450, 420, and 485, right? But that is one of the great things about real estate investing, man. If you guys know how to do this the right way, you can look at other people, maybe mom and pop landlords like this one who are running these properties, not as efficiently as they could. And that's how we create value. That's how we get these crazy deals, right? Because I tell you what, if this was a professional 
investor, a professional turnkey turnkey company, professional reseller, and they're bringing in $2,400 a month in rent currently, which is where this should be for the long haul. That's what Holton Wise will be able to target for you when we take over the management. You ain't selling it for 99 k dude. That doesn't make any sense because the numbers would be insane, right? $2,400 a month comes in, $28,800 a year after fixed and variable expense estimates, right? I anticipate this property costing an investor $13,096 a year on average to operate, leaving you with a $15,704 a year NOI. You pick it up at the price of $99,000, your mortgage down payment's only $24,750, right? How insane is that, right? $24,750 is all you need to bring to the table. Bank kicks in another seventy-five dollars That would be a 46.3% cash on cash return or a cap of sixteen. dollars that is, of course, if we can get the tenants, all three of which, from where they currently are, up to market rent. Now, this is the show where I cut it to you straight. This is the show where I talk to you about transparency in the real estate business. Is it possible that we could take our three legacy tenants, our three inherited tenants, paying below market rent, again, 450 420 485 can we possibly get them up to 750 750 900 without a turnover? Yes, it's possible. And I just gave you the numbers on what it would look like if we do that theoretically. However, in real world, is that practical? Probably not. I would say the odds are unlikely that you're going to get these three folks from where they currently are to market rent without at least doing one turnover, right? That's why when we run these numbers, we factor in vacancy, non-payment. We factor in repairs and maintenance, right? Because when you're a rental property investor, the majority of um, your repairs, right, they typically come at the turnover, right? People see like a repair estimate, like on this particular property, repairs and maintenance, we're estimating $120 a month. People see that and they get it like in their head, like, oh, I'm going to spend $120 every single month on repairs. No, it's not how it works, right? You're probably going to have like a tenant in there in that particular unit and you're going to go through like 10, 12, 14, 18 months of spending nothing. And then boom, when the tenant turns over, then you're dropping a few grand, things of that nature, right? That's how that works out, right? So, do I think that you can get those rents all the way up there without some type of turnover? Probably not, right? Maybe one, maybe two of the tenants, maybe we get them up. Uh, but I can't, you know, tell you with a certainty uh, how many of those tenants, uh, when and where that turnover is going to happen. So, right, as you're analyzing this property, think about making the investment. You have to understand that that is a risk, right? Turnover is part of the real estate investment business, right? Nobody gets rental properties and places tenants in there and gets 30, 40 year tenants all the time. That's just not practical, right? So uh, what you have going for you is right now, they can't get comparable units like this for anywhere near those prices. So what I like to do to lower the probability that they're going to turn because you increase the rent is I don't like to go in and be like, yo, market rent's 900, you're paying 485. Next lease, boom, you got to pay 900. I think that is going to give you a high chance that they're just going to be like, oh, dude, I can't afford it, and they will move out, right? And then you're almost guaranteed to spend that money on a turn. What I like to do, I like to raise the rents nice and slow. 50 this year, 50 next year, right? It'll still cash flow. The price is so freaking cheap, it'll still cash flow at the current rent. So I like to go nice and slow and keep those butts in the units, right? Because we make our money in this business by turning our units over as few times as possible. If you own a apartment building, you own, let's say you own one unit, right, for 20 years, the guy who makes the most money is the guy who turns it over the least amount of times over those 20 years. So, 99000 is what they're asking. I think we got to offer 99000 at the minimum. You let me know what you want to offer. I do not anticipate anything other than a massive bidding war. If it were me, I'd probably be willing to kick 10k above list price, but you let me know and I'll write it up. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.